Hi, my name is Don Bolt. Welcome to the 10-Minute Parent. Okay, this is part three, and I hope it will be our, our concluding part on anger and discipline. Uh, if you haven't already caught on to this, is something that, that all of us as parents need to address because anger can uh, be very, very destructive uh, to what we're trying to accomplish as godly parents. All right, so I want to address this one more video, and uh, I promise uh, we will be done. Okay, so we were talking about um, how to, to discipline your children. Uh, you know, using things that God recommends rather than using anger. What am I going to use instead of anger? If I'm not going to use anger, you know, I mean, when I spent all those years at Teen Challenge helping people get free from their drugs, all right, you know, but what am I going to turn to instead of my drugs? This was my salvation. This is what helped me, you know, what do you have to offer? Well, folks, this is what I have to offer. And again, Dad, you know, if you're out on the front porch drinking lemonade or something, get in here because I tell you what, this is for you, all right? It's not just for your wife, all right? So come on. All right, so number two, humble yourself and trust God to work through you. Hard thing for us to do as men is humble ourselves. But I'll tell you what, important thing for us all to do is to, to humble ourselves and realize that what we're doing, we are doing the work of God. We are doing something that God is involved in. And so humble yourselves. You know, can you, you've probably seen this happen where somebody was masterful at something that they were doing and somebody who really wasn't that good at it was trying to help them. And, uh, and that person got a little arrogant, was almost like correcting the master uh, in, in how to do the thing. And it's kind of awkward and everything. Well, sometimes we can get in that place with God. I mean, please understand, humble yourself before God and let him work through you. Uh, it's in 1 Peter 4, uh, verse 10, that says that each one of us has been given a special gift, and with this gift we serve one another as stewards, as people who are managers or distributors of the grace of God. See, there's something God is trying to pour through you into the lives of your children. Humble yourself and let God work that way through you. Uh, pity your children and show mercy. Psalm 103, verses 13 and 14. Remember how awe-inspiring and fear-producing you are to a young child. You know, learn to show uh, a certain kind of deference to your child. Uh, you know, don't press beyond what you have to in order to bring them to this place of submission and obedience. All right, that, you know, show pity and mercy towards your children. Understand, you know, how, how terrifying, you know, that kind of authority would be to you. And find somebody whom you come up to their hip joint uh, <laughs> and let them get that angry with you and see how you feel. All right, so anyways, remember to respect and value your children. They are learning how to treat people, including you, from your example. All right, so again, it's, you know, communicating this love and respect for my child. Look, you know, uh, you did wonderfully. You know, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, boy, I so appreciated how you did that. You know, you know, giving that love and respect in, in those in those times, so they understand you place a high value on them. And again, there's this tendency that they don't need you to be angry with them because they don't want to disappoint you. There was a young fellow that uh, that I'd been ministering to. And, uh, and I really felt like I was having an impossible time of getting through to him. And he was somebody who had dealt with a lot of anger and everything. I was always having to kind of calm him down. And years later, uh, he heard that I was concerned about some things that were going on in his life. He got together with me. We had lunch. And this is years later. And he had experienced what I'm telling you to do. And you know what? You know, we, we got done with lunch. And I was dropping him off. And he came back. And he stuck his head back in the car. And he said, uh, you know, um, are you still afraid, you know, for me? And I said, no, I'm not. And he said, well, that's good because I would never want to disappoint you. I'm going to tell you something, that's a powerful place to be in somebody's life. And you don't get there through wrath and anger, okay? You get there uh, through respect and valuing. This person understood what kind of value I placed on them. Uh, and that came through years of, of serving and loving. All right, number five, focus on restoring your child with an even temper. Galatians 6, 1. If somebody is overtaken in a fault, restore them. Set them in order, repair them, uh, bring them to completion, and do it with an even temper. All right? Because people are more likely to receive a healthy kind of correction from somebody if they're doing it in an even-tempered way because the focus stays on the revelation that what I did was wrong and my need for restoration rather than getting so focused on this person's anger that I can't see anything else. Okay, so focus on restoring your child with an even temper. Six, uh, correct and forgive in a short time. If your anger keeps coming back, be sure that you've forgiven your child and then keep putting your anger away. All right? Because... Um, if your child recognizes you as somebody who loves them enough to forgive them and therefore forgives them in short order, you know, when the time comes and when they've asked for forgiveness, uh, again, uh, anger will not be a particularly necessary thing. But if you find yourself still feeling, feeling anger, look, you know, make sure you've forgiven them. And if you have forgiven them, then recognize it may just be a continuing problem with anger that you have to go to the Lord with yourself. Use godly training and admonition, Ephesians 6, 4. Uh, see the teaching about this. There's a, there's a whole teaching about this uh, at a, another place in the 10-minute parent video. So I encourage you to go look to that. Teach your children to respond to gentle leading, all right? Think about this for a minute. Um, if, um, 
the first time you met me and you know I was your boss somewhere I came in and I'm yelling and cursing and ah, you know like this all right and, uh, and telling everybody what to do all right well after a month or so of, of that kind of uh, leadership you no longer respond to gentle leading I mean if somebody came in and said hey uh, folks uh, let's let's get the place cleaned up nobody know what to do all right but you want your children to learn to respond to gentle leading all right, so even at times when you've had to really press very hard to get uh, submission from your child, to get them to be obedient to you, the next time you come back to it, I want to encourage you, don't let your anger drag you back up into that harsh, heavy-handed kind of leadership. Go back to leading gently as much as you can. You want your children to respond to that gentle tug. All right, imagine uh, riding a horse that, that only knew how to move if you yanked on the reins, okay? Uh, same thing with your children. You want your children to learn to respond to gentle leading because you want them to be able to have gentle leaders, uh, you know, that they respond to well. All right, uh, use godly training and admonition. We talked about the gentle leading. Okay, sometimes overlook the infraction. Proverbs 19.11 tells us this, that it's uh, that uh, uh, a person's uh, discretion, their, their, their good judgment, uh, causes them to be able to overlook faults. There are times when it's, it's a good thing and your children recognize it as mercy when you say, look, I see what you did, uh, but look, tonight we were supposed to have a good time together. I'm going to overlook that. Let's have a good time. You know, this overlooking an infraction doesn't mean you have to pretend you didn't see it. Sometimes that may be the strategy, but uh, oftentimes just understand, God has overlooked your sins. Okay, you ever been going down the, the, the road and you're going a little over the speed limit and then all of a sudden you saw the police car and you went, oh, like this, and he didn't pull you over and why didn't that feel good, <laughs> right? I want you to understand, you want your children to have that experience with you. Desire to be approachable. If there's something that I would say is admirable about good leaders, it's they are approachable. They are easy to, to present your case to. That, that, you know, that if your child uh, you know, wants to come to you, they should feel very uh, welcome in your presence. Okay? Uh, work and minister in a way that will change your child's heart. Jesus taught us that behavior comes from the heart. All right? And in young children, your anger works like this. You get angry, your child fears, your child obeys. Ah, boy, man. child gets a little bit older, the parent gets angry, the child fears with resentment, and the child grudgingly obeys. All right, a little bit later in life, uh, when the fear is gone, the parent gets angry, the child resents the parent, the child ignores the parent and rebels. Okay, that's not what we want to see happen. Uh, learn to express grief and sorrow over what your child has done instead of anger. All right, the Holy Spirit grieves when we do wrong. The Apostle Paul grieved over the people who had rejected Christ, and uh, that becomes an important thing for us to do, is to, to learn to grieve rather than do that. And show your children the scriptural results of obedience and disobedience using the Bible in situations that you face every day. When you see somebody experiencing the consequences of sin, don't be afraid to point it out. When you see a person being blessed because they did what was right, point it out. All right, point it out in their own lives as well. And um, if at the end of all this you're still saying, you know something, you just don't understand how deeply this this whole thing of anger works in me. I just want to encourage you that um, recognize your own helplessness and um, and and ask God to do miracles in your life. God will deliver you from this anger. Uh, believe that God loves you and, uh, and will do that miracle for you. Confess this anger as sin and repent from it. You know, ask God's forgiveness. Admit it's wrong and, and ask God to help you. Forgive those that have hurt you. you know, a lot of times anger is, is motivated by the fact that we feel like people hurt us and didn't care. Uh, you know what, whether they cared or not is not our issue. Forgive them, let them go, and get on with your life in new freedom. And uh, understand, Ephesians 4, 20 through 32 tells us we have authority to put away anger and to put away pride. And, uh, and, and I would just encourage you, take that authority seriously. Stand up uh, as a person who's put their faith in Christ and, and, and put those things away and put them away until they're gone. Uh, and understand that uh, this thing of, of, of overcoming anger in life may take some years in your life to overcome, uh, but you don't want to wait uh, until you've got the whole victory for your children to get the blessing. And so I'd encourage you to, to, to walk in these steps uh, as you work on this in yourself if you see, feel it's really an abiding problem with anger. And uh, finally, let's just, just understand in all this, surrender everything to God. Surrender everything. If you find yourself uh, too willing to, to fight, too willing to, to get angry, I would just encourage you, uh, take the time and um, submit everything to God and make sure that everything is under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Because if it is, you'll be a much more effective father, a much more effective mother, and uh, the anger uh, won't be the thing that will become your child's inheritance, uh, but the righteousness of God in you, the righteousness that you showed to him, the love, the mercy, the, the, the love, the respect, all those things uh, get conveyed to your children, and the next generation rises and, and becomes something that uh, really kind of goes beyond our imaginations. And so I want to encourage you to keep on uh, you know, working uh, you know, with the Lord in, in partnership with him to raise those children 
Thanks for coming to the 10-Minute Parent. We'll see you next time.